Attention viewers, everyone has different experiences around mental well-being. The opinions expressed within this video are solely the guests and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of ITV or Campaign Against Living Miserably. Oi, you. Dr Alex here. There's no prescription for our down days. All of it's okay. You don't have to be wholesome to be healthy. Just do what gets you through. This is how we move. Hey everyone, welcome back to How We Move in partnership with Campaign Against Living Miserably. The show where we find out the offbeat ways people get through life's difficult moments. I'm Dr. Alex George, I'm your host today, and I'm joined by three more pairs of friends to find out how they positively deal with their mental well-being. Hello, I'm Greg Rutherford, uh, Olympic long jump champion from London 2012, and now TV presenter. Hi, uh, I'm Rob Rinder, human rights barrister, uh, TV presenter, and Gregory Rutherford's platonic lover. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And before we start, then Rob, um, mm. can I say this is not a cross-examination, um, so please don't grill me. I'll just put an early plea of guilty, otherwise I'll defer to Greg to defend me in court. <laughs> or we can settle, but then again, Greg's going to try and settle for me. Yeah, it it's happens okay. to me most of the time anyway, to be totally honest, so I just have to nod. I, I hear the first dinner party together, you, or the first time you met, you did get cross-examined, I think you were saying that earlier, is that yeah, true? Yeah, we were talking about sport for a long time. And uh, yeah, I, I genuinely thought, I think, I'm pretty sure Rob's taking the mick out of me here. Um, but no, he wasn't, I realised he was a big sports fan, which I thought was amazing. I'm Terrell Charles, and I'm a content creator and presenter. I'm Harps Carr and I'm a broadcaster and TV presenter. Trell Harps, welcome to How We Move. How are you both? Yeah, good, Doing thank good, you. Doing good, man. Thanks for having us. I'd first like to start with finding out a little bit how you both know each other. When did you meet? When did you become friends? Trell, you want to answer that? Yeah, about, what uh, was it, an hour ago? Hour ago? Hour yeah. ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Yaboa. I am a content creator, a freelance journalist and an author. Hi, my name is Demi Colleen. I am an influencer, a writer and I'm also a veterinary nurse. Well, welcome to How We Move and thanks so much for joining me. So let's talk about well-being and growing up. What was the conversation around that? Was there a conversation about well-being? Conversation? Mm. <laughs> Not in my community, no. no. So <laughs> for me, um, I'm from a West African background and <laughs> wellness and self-care and, um, and uh, mental health are not things that are part of the everyday uh, discussion um, in, within like the black community. It's still, for the most part, very much taboo. What does well-being mean to you? you know, when did you start thinking about it in your own lives? I mean, like a lot of people, I feel like the pandemic was very much like sort of just the kick in the butt to get me like properly taken care of myself. Like, you know, I went to the, the, the gym and, as and when I could. I do sports with my mates every once in a while. Mm. Um, and, you know, I try to cook relatively healthy and do the, the, the general little things that you're meant to do or whatever. But I think where lockdown like literally put me in like you know, a pretty bad mental state, I couldn't, couldn't do much else. All, the only, only thing I knew I could do to kind of keep control of everything in my life was just start taking care of myself. So. When I felt like that everyone else in the world were like doing their, you know, one hour walks and stuff like that, and, you know, attempting to run. You're a keen runner, is that right, Rob? Well, you're good at running. So, I mean, like, you shouldn't... That's it's always good, you love to poop out straight away, but you've run a very fast time for a marathon and you're very good at it. I mean, the absurdness of sitting next to somebody who's won a gold medal <laughs> at the Olympics, the World Championship, the European Championship, go, I'm good at sport. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't run a sub three well, hour so marathon. It's ridiculous. Sorry? That is very I couldn't quick. run a sub three hour marathon. You actually could if you put your mind no. to it. It's interesting, so obviously I am half black and but I was actually raised predominantly by my white Irish mother and um, it, it's interesting actually when I think about it with regards to like our discussions about mental health and I think, you know, we've been quite an open family and I've always felt like I can speak to her about how I'm feeling um, and vice versa, but I actually think that now looking back, all the issues that she was struggling with whilst being a single parent, she hid from myself and, and my sister uh, I guess, suppose in order not to, to burden mm. us. And I think it took a long time for her to sort of unlearn that. And I think that's also helped her encourage us to be more open because it was sort of suffering in silence and she definitely didn't want that to happen to us. Harps, what does it mean to you? And uh, yeah, when, when did you start thinking about it really? I think for me, I'd had a couple of different situations happen throughout my life, probably at the age of 16 when it started, but Pandemic, again, was something that made me act upon it. I think that's the only time I really realised, actually, I need to do something about this. The problem is you wouldn't enter a marathon because your mental health would not do well entering any event where you couldn't win it. Is that true? 
I'd like to believe I can accept what I'm good and bad at. So me and Rob met on a show, which I knew a I wasn't going to be, a dancing show yes. that I knew I wasn't going to be particularly good at. And I was very happy to accept I wasn't going to be particularly good at That's it. not true. That's very true. Um, so I know <laughs> in life what I'm good and what I'm bad at. But I feel like that's fair enough. Is that not fair enough? No, not really, no, it's not. I got annoyed about certain things, but I got annoyed about, not about the fact that I wasn't good at it, I got annoyed about certain things around what was going on. You were in a semi-permanent state of glittery rage. <laughs> the only time I ever saw you happy was when you were in the last two, ever, and you'd like, come alive, because then there's a contest on. You know, our wellness was church, <laughs> so it was very much like, well, if you're feeling down, go to church and pray it out, kind of thing, and um, for me, it did take a detrimental effect on my mental health because I was diagnosed with um, depression when I was 14. And I had to go through loops to try and get that diagnosis without my parents finding out. So that meant going to the GP and making up an excuse as to why my parents couldn't come with me. Has the conversation changed, um, you know, since being a, a child and kind of going through teenage and years and stuff, has the conversation now changed with family and things? Do you have, or have you noticed that there is a bit more opening up of that conversation? I'm quite fortunate that like my family and even like sort of the friends that I've come with are like have been very open about mental health, especially like my mum's always kind of been a big advocate of like whatever's, like, what's on your mind, like kind of mm. thing. Like I think a lot of me and my siblings have that in common. We're like, we're very comfortable with each other that we can tell each other certain things. Maybe some siblings will tell more than the other. I've got I've got six siblings. Oh wow. So I mm -hmm. I know who I need to talk Make to about certain things. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, mm, yeah. Got topics yeah, I'm like that's a Ramon yeah. conversation. But that's <laughs> it. <laughs> it's an interesting one because I feel like we're in a generation now where our generation we're starting to teach our parents new things. So for me it was like having that discussion with my mum maybe like three or four years ago and telling her that, you know, when I was younger, I suffered from this and you never knew. And then it's like, with her generation, you know, again, she was very much of the we move, stiff upper lip, don't talk about it, just get on with it type of thing. I think for me, culturally, it's a little bit different because I feel like coming from an Asian background, I've not really experienced too many people being open about mm. it, but I know it happens a lot and it's very common. I go through it myself. I mean, I've got major anxiety. I've been through depression. I've been through all of that. But if I'm really honest, even though my family are there, and I know they are because they're a great support system, mm. I don't really think they understand it quite down to a T, if that makes sense. I don't think they get there's a difference between being stressed and actually suffering through mental health. Yeah. Like, there is a difference. And I think because I've lost um, very close loved ones in ways you wouldn't imagine, those are kind of triggers for me now as well as I've grown up because getting over it, getting around it, but really trying to understand why did it happen? How did it get there? Why is no one talking about it? That's a really big issue to me because I think we've all got a voice and we've all got ears. So there's always someone that can listen to you and yes, there's always someone so that can true. speak. Yeah, so for sure. I think now we're seeing more platforms where we can discuss it. Things like this are great. This yeah. is why I love sharing stuff like this because it's the only time you get to really voice what you're thinking and how you feel about it. And it just takes that one person to come across it and go, actually, I relate to that. I want yeah, to hear exactly, a little bit more. Yeah. And maybe that might help. Now, I'd really like to learn a bit about how you, how you both move. Let's have a bit of fun, shall we? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. OK, Rob, can you show us how we're going to move? Well, they wouldn't let me bring in my ice bath, which is a converted freezer outside, which brings me lots of joy. And I was going to disco dance, but apparently you have to conscript your fellow person into it. And <laughs> frankly, I think the public have suffered enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I want yeah, to... This to... Is the, the, oh. Go on, you do it. Enjoy um, it. Are you feeling competitive? No, he's overthinking No, I'm not competitive, it. I'm terrified. So I wanted to share the poem that moves me mm -hmm. and hopefully will move other people to be moved in a moving way. How do you move? I just laugh. <laughs> I just start laughing it's like oh, just spontaneous just laughter. spontaneous laughing um and it works with any situation like whether you're anxious or anything like that it starts off like really awkward and fake but like you start making yourself laugh to the point that you almost like can't stop and i always feel amazing afterwards i think it's like a rush of endorphins or something like that terrell what's your activity of choice all right so i'm a big movie buff or movie and tv show buff so right now we've got heads up charades <laughs> Um, Great. So basically, no pressure. No. <laughs> we've got movies on our heads. You got to give us clues, and we have to guess. I feel what like the, the pressure's movie is. on me on this one. It is. Yeah, like, I, I feel your clues need to be good. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ozymandias. I said I met a traveller from an antique land who said, 
Two vast and trunkless leads of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survived, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. Go on then, let's see it, let's do it. Oh God, no this pressure. is not pressure. pressure. I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like having to laugh okay. about anyone. I know, right? Pressure. Yeah, so basically you just literally kind of, I guess, get a lot of air and you yeah. just start laughing like, ha 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 one, okay, uh, it's an old film, and basically there's a videotape these kids put into into the, in, you know, the old videotapes, into yeah. the TV, and then all these, like, elephants and stuff start running. Jumanji? Yes, well done. Wait, 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 oh, there's uh, and then there's another, and so, um, very famous film with a little kid that gets left in the house. Home Alone. Uh, yeah, great, next one. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look upon ye works, ye mighty and despair. No thing beside them remains round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. The thing is about laughter is that it boosts endorphin levels, also causes the release of serotonin. Even smiling is like shown to improve our brain chemistry and stuff. I want it to not almost be genuine at first because it's like a a practice of like, you know, uh, just, I don't know, like flexing a muscle or something mm. like that. So, um, but afterwards, like I said, it almost like starts snowballing into genuine laughter yeah. because you just realize how ridiculous yeah. it sounds or looks. And it's even better if you do it in front of a mirror because you just like, <laughs> are just, you know, laughing at yourself and it just becomes like this kind of like fun activity. Um, so, uh, scar on his head. Scarface. No, well, it's, it's a young boy that goes through. Oh, Harry Potter. Yeah, and wait, 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 wait. Oh, and yeah. there's, um, uh, I don't know which one it is though. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. It goes through the different ones. It, it basically, um, like a cauldron, it'd be a... It's, not, it's also Harry Potter, no. Okay, I, I think it's too difficult. We'll keep Harry Potter, no, we'll keep that, that's good. Nothing there. For 5,000 years, everybody would have created their whole lives worried concerned, in fear of this deity, whole civilization set up for this purpose. And then thousands of years later, so back to the birth of Christ, another 2,000 years, another 1,000 years, the whole idea of permanence, of what we believe to be true today forever, is now somebody coming along to a wreck of this God, look upon you mighty in despair, and it's now just a ruin. Okay, um, uh, uh, um, I can't use the word, a um, uh, guy, it's purple guy, and he's yeah. um, Willy Wonka, isn't it like that? Or something? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, brilliant, okay. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, 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 sorry, that's great. Uh, oh, a footballer, and it's like, he kicks the ball and he curves it, the other word of Ben Yes, brilliant, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, uh, and, um, uh, uh, I got, there, that, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a penguin. Oh, is, is it a penguin? Yeah, yes. Oh, happy feet. Uh, have you not seen penguins? You know, the little <laughs> flappy things? Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't that's know. A that's okay. a boomerang. Uh, and but... there's, a, there's, a, there's a film. Uh, Madagascar. That can't be it. Yes, Madagascar. Yeah, I'm giving that. Yeah. I'm giving that. <laughs> well, hang on. Are you sure you want me to read this now? That was beautiful. And I will absolutely butcher no, I think it. Let's do it's it. not true. It's no, but I will. I it's will. It's just you lowering expectations. Like before, you know, I've no, got a bad leg. I've got a bad leg. I've got a bad. He's gone. <laughs> we say often that, you know, oh, I need, need, maybe you need to cry or whatever. Like, it's maybe quite similar to that, right? Because sometimes, like, crying in itself is actually quite... A form of release, isn't it? A sure release. Is, yeah. But yeah. laughter is just another form of releasing energy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it definitely is. And that's the thing, I think, when we think about something like anxiety or depression, like, the way I always um, envision it is that it's basically like this ball in my you know, stomach, or sometimes I can feel like it's something sitting on me and deflating me. So like doing something that's like a, a massive outburst almost feels like I'm just like breaking that off of me or releasing something. So Is that a penguin? What? <laughs> look at this, can you zoom in on that? People at home, please. I mean, look, it's supposed <laughs> to be clever. That's a good penguin. Is it? Great. Thank you. No, I see it now. I can, I can see, I see it now you have described it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just think when you're in those situations where you feel like completely unmotivated and you're just sitting there doing nothing, mm. just, just laugh. Well then, Terrell, you got five. Thank very you. impressive, very impressive. Too okay, bad. are you Good ready? Luck. No, but let's do it. <laughs> Three, yeah. two, one. Okay. 
go. So lightsabers. Star Wars. Um, and the person came back. It's the main. Star what? Wars. Return of Star Wars. Return of Return <laughs> of. What are the people that carry the lightsabers? Um, I, I the lightsabers know. you call them. Oh, I wouldn't know. So, yeah, they'll Light give it to you. That's yeah, good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's hear it, shall we? <clears throat> okay, fine. Here we go. Be kind. I met a traveller from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor, well whose passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them and the heart that fed Right, let's do this together, shall we? So okay. you lead us. What is it? Upright posture. Yeah, you've got to get in as much air okay. as possible. So you're going to take in a nice sort of That's deep a bit breath. Mindful, yeah, <sighs> and then you're just going to literally start <laughs> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> if you're there's another word of being unbelievable. You're kind of uh, the big, the big muscly guy. He's got like the incredible. eye. And the incredible. Yes, that's it. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my uh, If you're not a devil, you might be a angel. Yeah. And uh, uh, a, a a two and a half men, the main character. Uh, uh, what else can I you do? You can't have to help me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thanks. Uh, okay, let's do the other one. Um, so if you're not a boy, you're a girl. And the opposite of um, being um, uh, boring. Girl, exciting. Uh, another word for that. <laughs> ha ha ha! You made me laugh. I'm, Girl, happy. Uh, you, so smile. You might just—if I make you laugh, you might describe me as being uh, uh, funny. Yes, funny girl. Great. Yes, yes, right, that's yeah, good. That. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and on the pedestal, these words appear: My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. No thing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, and lone and level sands stretch far away. I think that was a right. I was terrified. That was brilliant. I thought that was great. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just got used to it. I was not from behind as well. That's a really good song. <laughs> This, this is really hard, can I just yeah, say? Yeah, I don't know what I mean. Hard. This is I really hard. hard. Okay, do another, do another one. Keep going, keep going. Keep Change going. Get rid okay, of that okay, one. Cool. That's too hard. Um, that one? Oh, yes, here we go. The song, the song that they, the really high-pitched song, it's on like, ice, ice. Frozen. Yes. Uh, and, oh, everyone loves this film. It's a Marvel movie. Oh, um, great. Why did you not get this um, one? Um, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't watch <laughs> Marvel. I can say that is the first time in my life I've ever read poetry. How, How does it feel? feel? Did you enjoy it? Was it was terrifying, but it's, it What's is really good, actually. Yeah. Right. It was more terrifying because I would have liked to have actually learnt the poem properly. Because that's but... a competitive thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I hate my laugh now. Oh. Oh. Okay, so, so You've got a nice laugh, laugh, though. It's yeah. fine. Doing Mine's it more in, like I'm it's choking. It's like a yeah. shuttle. Choking a cat Doing it in public is a, like is a massive pressure, but seeing it at home by yourself... I can imagine if you're on your own, there's a lot less pressure. Yeah, it's less embarrassing, that's for sure. You scored three, which I think, given how hard those were, yeah, was a very I respectable I'd score. Well, well done. Yeah, yeah. Thank, well you. Thank you. I, I actually enjoyed that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> pressured. I was getting like, my heart is. Hang on. It pulls it going. Pressure. Oh I my don't god. Know why. It was like, yeah. get yeah. it going. Yeah. You know? It doesn't necessarily calm me <sighs> down, but like, you know what I mean? Let's, yeah, that's that stressed me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit about what it means when we say we move or how we move. What does that mean to both of you? So for me, the phrase we move is more of a, a sentiment of moving on to the next thing, despite adversity, despite you know struggles that we've come through, we move on to the next one and try and strive and do better. And you know, tomorrow's another day, basically. So now it's kind of entered the general sort of lexicon as a way to kind of, almost as if you're saying, keep calm and carry on type of thing. Yeah, actually that's quite, a, I guess, a similar thing. You know, you're both high achievers in your own rights and different kind of fields. What is it like to feel that fear of failure? Because I kind of, you had joked about it, but that kind of fear of like, what if I go on the show and I, I'm not good at this, or I want to be really good at running a marathon. How does that affect your mental health? Because it's nice when you're winning, but I guess maybe not so much when you're not. Yeah, I, I think as I say with me, there is a level of acceptance of what I can and can't do. So if I know I'm not going to be particularly good at it, I won't get too concerned about winning at it, if that makes sense. But I will try incredibly hard to become as good as I physically can be. Previously, when it was my job and my life to try and win at everything I did, because every time I stepped onto a, a runway, I was expected to win, and I expected myself to win. You, le you learn to sort of deal with failure 
in a positive way as much as you possibly can, because it's very hard, obviously. You want to win, you've worked very hard to win, and then you lose. If you dwell on that too much, it really becomes something that affects you massively. And often we see sportsmen and women around the world who can't come back from the failures because it sits too heavily on them. You're both content creators, I mean, I, 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 different ways and similar ways. TV and radio, um, and li especially live, can be very, very hard yeah. because you're getting very real, almost you can have a very real judgment. You can't basically edit exactly what's going mm -hmm. on. You say something on radio is out there. Yeah. How do you deal with the pressure of kind of doing that like day in, day out? It yeah. must be stressful at times. Very stressful because you don't realise that actually part of your job is performing as well. You are acting sometimes. And as much as you want to be you and you want to be real, and you are, and I'd like to think that I am because I'm probably just the same on TV and radio than I am in person, but there will be aspects or times in your life where you're having a bad day as well. So like, I could have had a really bad morning, but I'm waking up to do a breakfast show. Yeah. And then to learn how to switch that little switch in your mind from, okay, you can't like be in this mood because you're about to wake up the nation that helps for the next four hours. Like you can't be in that mood because it will reflect on your listeners or your viewers do know that. And, and We Move has um, a bit of a history to it, doesn't it? I mean, we use, we use it quite commonly now, but it, it it, it was a term, I believe, that was used was it in Nigeria originally. Is that yeah, true? I believe that it actually originates from a Nigerian term and was uh, sort of first brought about during the SARS sort of movement. And uh, people were using that in the same context of, you know, moving on in terms of adversity, awful things were happening. But again, you know, we're still strong and, and we move on. So obviously over time that that's now become quite a popular term, especially on Twitter, for example. Uh, just to sort of use for everyday issues. And, you know, I think it's great because although it has these big uh, origins of something, you know, larger than ourselves, I think it's, it's a great lesson to uh, live by and, and apply to our own situations, yeah. And I think it is important to hear that because a lot of people will see, for example, someone who is, who's top, been top of the game or is top of the game in the legal profession or someone who's succeeded uh, in sport or whether someone's, you know, a doctor or dance, whatever it might be, you see like the end point. You maybe don't see the bits that happen in the middle, like failing to get you know certain grades or like failing in a race or whatever. Have you ever failed, Rob? The reality is I fail all the time. We all do. We set ourselves narrative stories, be it in the context of friendship or passing exams or the way that we have held a pen and written how perfect it's going to be. Relationships, they never look or feel ideal in the way that we've imagined. And a great deal of our disappointment and our darkness, sometimes even depression, exists in the chasm between what we've written, projected, and maybe even hoped for, and the reality. Trial, you've worked with some massive stars, and I guess the pressure of, of course, yeah, doing live things, but also there's a pressure of, um, you know, I've got X amount of time with this person who's yeah. very busy and you yeah. want to capture this content. It's slightly different maybe, but it's it's a pressure in itself. How, how do you deal how do you deal with that? And the anxiety sometimes that must be there with meeting people, you're like, oh my god, like yeah. I look up to this person or whatever. Yeah, the nerves never go away before like a celebrity. Especially like a lot of the actors that I've that I've like been able to talk to and stuff, I've been like a massive fan of Tom Holland. Yeah, Zendaya, Tim like all of them, I was like, I went in and I was like, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't I want to come across like nice and uh, warm and stuff to them. I guess it's a similar thing to Harps. Like even in interviews, as much as I, I try to be myself and I want to like make them feel comfortable and stuff like that, it is sometimes turning on a bit of a character mm. to make sure that the interview is quite interesting and stuff like that. Like, the thing is that when you're at the top of your game, like Greg was, and I've seen this with you, and I think we've talked about it a little bit. You can't win in the way he did, right? Have the profundity of that high, you know, where you're this serotonin nuclear explosion of achieving everything you've set out to do. Mm. It's different from law, which is slightly ephemeral, being a doctor, and slightly different. There have been moments to be sure I'm very proud of, but you, you work your life to win a gold medal, you win it. It happens, that moment happens. You achieve everything that you hoped. In other words, the film that you started at the beginning in, the end results in the victorious narrative the romantic happy ending. For most people that doesn't happen, it did for him. What happens when that comes to an end? Yeah. How do you deal with that grief process? And how did you deal with that? I didn't feel grief as such. Maybe I was, I don't know, 
aware enough of what was going on is that I straight away knew it would never be as good as it was in London because it was never going to be as good again. No. I knew, I saw London 2012 as an opportunity because I knew if I had a good Olympic Games, yeah. it would most certainly change my life, yeah, oh, which absolutely. it did. Yeah. And I also knew as well, I would never, probably in our lifetime, we'll never see Olympic Games in London again. Right. What I didn't realize I would miss with some of the smaller aspects of it. For example, I don't miss running and jumping into a sandpit at all. What I miss is walking into a stadium and having 80,000 people scream and clap for you because it's really addictive. <laughs> and that's an amazing feeling. And it's one, when you feel it, even if even once, you want it all the time. But I'd really like to talk for a moment on, on how we engage in different kind of backgrounds because we know that in terms of the black community, the Asian community, it can be really difficult for people to come forward when they're struggling. Mm -hmm. Likewise, another huge community is the farming community, uh, a stereotypical male community that, 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 that quite often uh, find it very difficult to talk about their, their yeah. mental health. So how do we engage with different communities? How do we get people talking like, you know, so you say your family and things, yeah. how do we, without making people alienated, it's not about saying, oh, you don't understand this. How do we, how do we get them involved in the conversation? I think because of my personal experiences, having lost so many loved ones to suicide. Mm. And funnily enough, they're all men. Um, it does make me wonder why they haven't spoken about it, why they are not talked about it. So yeah, those, those, those thoughts do cross my mind. How do we get people to talk? Because the issue is they're not talking. Mm -hmm. I think people like ourselves need to come forward, especially from ethnic backgrounds, to talk about it and yeah. say it's all right to not be all right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we all have those days. And I think there's a there was a weird thing of like when I was growing up, there was always a, a case of like, oh, the young the young mm. should inspire the young kind of a thing. That was always kind of yeah. how I was like taught. But I would actually say that sometimes it's more impactful for people in like sort of older generations that kind of that traditionally would have that sort of older mindset. So like the black community, a lot of the you know the older men, they very much perpetuate the idea of like mm. you keep your feelings to yourself, you know, be a man's man kind of a thing. Um, but for me, like my uncle was like one of the first people that like that, you know, close to me that kind of came out and said that, said that he was dealing with like anxiety and depression and stuff like that. And I, me at the time, knowing that I was also dealing with those things, I was like, oh, are we allowed to? I didn't know we could talk about that. So especially, you know, we were in the same family. The permission to talk on it. Yeah. yeah. For people watching, is it important to try and, you know, attach yourself to different things and bring your attention to different areas and find change and things like that? Well, I've had the real gift of doing that in the truest sense. This extraordinary buffet of luck that I've had I mean, yeah, I was doing a very serious job representing the government sometimes in big international cases or the privilege of representing defendants who were often in crisis. Um, and that work really mattered. And after a period of time, it left me empty. And without the motivation without the sense of connection, I'm gonna use that word three times is important, a sense of connection, connection to the purpose, the mission of it. Um, very quickly, I found myself depleted, little finite amounts of currency like a bank. I'd build bankrupt every day. It wasn't restoring me and out of luck from nowhere, I end up doing you know, Judge Rinder, which some people think has an element of pantomime, but in the, in the course of a day, we'll do eight cases. Four of them lot, be yeah. desperately serious. Stephanie, I'm looking at this, I'm very worried. Yes. What, what are you doing to us? We are <laughs> going to be watching videos of people having ingrown hairs taken out. Oh, wow. Blackheads, ingrown hairs, it's, it these, gives these me... These aren't your kind of run-of-the-mill ones either, are they? No, these are the ones that are like really badly infected. Oh, so God. you get the goo, you get the, the, the sebum, stuff. you get the oils, yeah. You get the Produces crunchiness the oils, and the... the crunchiness of the... Crunchy? Yeah. Oh, what's crunchy about? Oh, no. By the magic of TV, I have these two wonderful metal detectors, which I assume is your, going to be your activity. Weird, ne never seen one before in my life. You've never? I did, no. Harps, I'm not going to lie, I'm absolutely buzzing. Because people won't know this, but I love a dance. Do you? I absolutely love it. I don't, I'm not very good at dancing, mm. <laughs> but the dance might have something, it's just like there's something about it. But that's the thing, Alex, you don't need to be good. Yeah. You just need to be having fun. Yeah. That's yeah. why I love to dance. I to switch off and actually often to think about nothing, but sometimes to think about everything, if you like. I know what you mean, yeah. It, I go metal detecting or mudlarking. Right, well, we're gonna give this a go. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm on, I think this is actually um, age appropriate for five-year-olds. Oh, Excellent. so we've got some good bangers on this so thing. No, right. So no pressure, right? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Are you ready? Yeah, right. I mean, kind of, yeah, go on then. Let's go. I think it gets harder the longer you last. Oh, does it? Okay. 
See, we're bopping, we're bopping. This is what you need to be hey. doing. Go do it in with the rhythm, yeah? Yeah, look, you try different feet. Like that. Whoa. <laughs> Keep your rhythm, come on. <laughs> what I find amazing about mudlarking, and I try and promote it to everybody. Now, first, we need a license to do it, and I have to stipulate that because if people just go down to the foreshore, it's, it can be quite dangerous. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Of course, please. It's don't tidal. Do that. So don't yeah. just go down and there. And illegal. And it can, and illegal, of course. Yeah, if you get caught without a license, you're in trouble. Yeah. Mm. But obviously, when you're licensed enough and go with somebody that has experience to do it, you are literally, you are effectively at times stepping back in history. So All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm so happy. Nice one there. So that's not too bad, it's just pulling, so in growing, like you get like a bit under the skin, don't you? you mm -hmm. I already feel ill. But how is this relaxing for you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't are expecting you, you, that. <laughs> I know this is a bit of fun, but this is also very serious. <laughs> I'm taking it seriously such. now, that's it, serious. This is okay. a serious game. Competition's on. Okay. Um, I would say, so mudlarking, you can find anything because you're using your eyes. Now, metal detecting, of course. You're How long do I have to do this before I say, I'm bored? <laughs> well, on a normal average detecting session, I might go for six hours or so if I can, if I've got time. Six hours. I take my eldest son as well. That's good. And it, it's That's nice. a level of concentration, though. Well, yeah, but it's nice time with him. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of quiet. But it's education as well, I imagine you can teach. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I say, the, the Edward the First coin that I found the other day, which what? is about 700 Here's the thing, I love the stuff. Yeah. So I mean, especially Edward the First. Exactly, a fascinating king. So for me, oh, it's... No. That's a good one. It's, do you know what it is? I don't know if it's like a build-up of when you're squeezing a spot or like you're squeezing or you're trying to extract something and it's that constant build-up of pressure until yeah. it erupts. Explosion. Yeah. And Why it's... couldn't you watch a volcano erupting or something? Is <laughs> no, that not, like, less not the same? <laughs> Have you ever squeezed a spot and felt the spot come out of your skin? It's a cool feeling. Oh, like, here oh, we go. Wow. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Double. Got double. Whoa. It's actually playing with my mind, this is. There what a go. nice double. It's a good little exercise. What do you do if it's a triple? I don't think you showed that many feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shall we, or shall we start? Right, so, I mean, I've, I've sort of explained, I mean, I'm, I think most, oh, hello, straight away. What's this? Um, I think most people understand the premise of, doing? of metal detecting. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, these ones are interesting ones. We had, give them a little tester earlier. Um, these seem to be more, uh, right, to confirm bunch, okay. there's metal. Yes. Rather than, what does this do? Oh, yeah. oh, no. oh there you go, there you go. What does this do? Look, what, what is actually? So, is there oh. a is there a coin under here? What do we got what here? The sound, what are the oh, 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 a screwdriver! Now sometimes you do find things that are useful as well. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that's that's a triple. Triple. how do you do that? I guess, isn't it? <laughs> you just got to hit all three as fast as you can. Oh, <laughs> four. Whoa! <laughs> go, go, go! Okay, that is actually really hard. How is a five-year-old doing this? <laughs> There we are. What have we got? What have we got in this one? Oh, I never have somebody, pick up I never have somebody to pick up things for me. That's, always, that's a yes, great I'll thing. There we are. Listen, I, what is I'm that? Really you dig. What is it? That's a good question. What is this? I think it's off the camera, isn't it? That's why it keeps going down. I have no transferable skills. <laughs> oh, I've just found something by accident. I have a pen. Oh, hang on, what have we got here? Let me... Ah, oh, key. There we are. I'm always losing my keys, probably mine. I like to think oh, yeah. there's a five-year-old watching this right now. Right, being can like, I have a go? Can I have a go? Yeah, go, please do. Let's go. Go on, oh, it's gone, it's gone slow for me, man. Keep going, keep going. Like, I like to think I've got good reactions. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm using the one foot technique. You just like the one foot. I'm using the one foot like, technique. No, I'm just not like, fast enough. It's going to be quicker. It's like Ninja. No, this is revolting. I mean, it's... Oh. I mean, I could... I, before I went to med school, I was really squeamish, but I could genuinely have, like, Sunday roast right now. Yeah. Honestly, could you? we could do it. We could do that together. Absolutely. Sunday like roast. this is this yeah, is don't my invite work. Invite me. I'm not. I'm not and my one is like I'm got. I've become so attuned to it now. I have like playlists, so I know that the like the best popping ones are underarms because of like the deodorants and stuff that we use. Yeah. Sometimes people can get yeah, really yeah, bad yeah, blackheads, yeah. and so sometimes the stuff that comes out of it's like something out of Alien, exactly. and I love it. I mix it up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem it. Is you use both Let's mix it up. Oh, actually, that is quicker. Yeah, right, you're in. Your turn. Why have you got a bigger one than me? <laughs> what is it for? Um, to find metal. Or do I just press it? Well, no, what you meant to do is actually, obviously, the coil goes over the We won't the have these very fine, handy uh, But I, these coils, they're, Mine like, doesn't work. Not, they're not very strong. There we are, look, we found something there. What is it? I used to work in a pathology lab, and so I'm so used to seeing oh, random body parts. Now. And I love like biology and like yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. So this kind of stuff, I'm just, it's just like, how many things can the human body just have just lurking under the surface? Yeah. I think that's part of what it is, is that- I'm, Why is it so wet? It says oh, metal found on the screen. Bit, on. What right, have we got? Let's have a look. Oh, oh. oh this, now, this that's, is a very, very yeah, what common What do you find? about rubbish? Like this kind of thing. You throw it away, yeah, so yeah. You, you, you get it, you collect it up and then you just put it in the bin. To be clear, your, your mental health regime, this is so much about changing the 
face of history and recurating no, the past. No, that's the main part. It's mainly litter picking. And litter picking, yeah, 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 yeah. You're starting on a good level here, Dwell. Rhythm, yes! See? This is some kind of dodgy nightclub at four in the morning, <laughs> isn't it? This is. It sounds like it. I'm trying to use the right leg, not on the right side. Has anyone walked in and caught you uh, in, 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 on the playlist, shall we say? And so, they're like, well, hang on, what's going on My here? mum has. Um, when I went over for Christmas and I was in my room and I was going to sleep and she could just hear me, like, cackling. So she came in to see whether... Cackling. Like, I was just laughing. What was being extracted at that um, point? Was it evolving? It was this time? an underarm cyst and oh, it was a blackhead, but the blackhead was like the size of like a it was like the size of like a walnut. It was a huge blackhead, like this big. Juicy oh, one. Wow. It was a juicy one. And I was, I don't know, I just started laughing because I was like, how can the human body create yeah. that and just have it under the surface? And my mum came in <laughs> and she saw the laptop and she looked at me and she looked at the laptop and then she looked at me and she just walked out. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yes, the doubles are in. Oh my gosh, my back's falling off. <laughs> Oh, no, so no, wait, no, no, this is well-being, we help other people. <laughs> yeah, get teamwork. In. So we only found probably a few nuts, bolts and pens that may have been happily placed there, but how are we feeling? Was that nice? It's always, Not you know, the same. I've wanted Rob to, to do a bit of that with you for such a long time, and... Rob, did you enjoy it? No. <laughs> well, the I whole point is that everyone moves in different ways. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if this gets you through... It really does, it really does. Are you hooked now? Not for me. Um, okay. not, <laughs> the only thing I want to move is away from you, knowing that <laughs> this is what gets you, you going. It I'm, really does. No, yeah. I love it so not much. Not a fan. On that note, I think we'll close the laptop, shall Please. we? Please. <laughs> Gotta find the right strategy now. See, now it's calm. See? Oh, well, here you go. I feel cool. suitably relaxed. I've won that, no? Done. Yeah. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Let's turn it off. Yeah, excellent oh, that was good. It. Shout out to all the five-year-olds that have managed to achieve yeah, they that. We have a lot of respect they did it way better than us. Yeah. They did it so <laughs> well. five-year-olds are laughing at us that absolute <laughs> amateurs. Rob, what other ways do you, do you find that just, you can just chill out and things? What's your go-tos? My real passion is classical music, but obsessionally about stuff. So it'll be uh, listening to anything Leonard Bernstein talks about. People talking about things they're passionate. It could be anything. Um, and... I like female grime artists, but I'll listen to that alongside reading, for example, Sylvia Plath, anything that feels connected to something honest and real. I love to colour. I have so many colouring books, which people find hilarious when I tell them this is what I do. But I find it so therapeutic. Mm. Like I you get just, that. Completely get yeah, that. you zone mm. out from everything else, put a bit of music on, and that's it. When you're doing it, is it yeah. kind of, is it? Classical music you're playing. It must be relaxing. Yeah, music it's very slow music. I've got my slow jams on. Slow jam, the chill yeah, music. Yeah, sentimental on. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your yeah, feet like relaxing. I'm a huge gamer. I love video games and have done since, gosh, when I, since the age of like five, six. So um, alongside like comic books, which I love, video games, any kind of escapism for me has always been a huge tool um, for my self care. So any, anything that kind of has like a kind of quest or like a side quest. What about you? I mean, like in, in a sort of similar fashion, like I just like, like drawing a lot. Like, mm. a, well, mostly like sort of doodling. Like I'm not like, I'm not like massive canvases out on that, but like they're, <laughs> they're about a hundred pages just scattered all over my desk, just sort of like random little characters. And I won't even play music. I'd be like watching a film, like very much paying attention, but in my hand, I'll kind of just be like wandering hands. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, very much like just to distract myself. I can do it in pure silence, to be honest. Usually if music's playing, I'm like, I'm stopping what I'm doing and I'm dancing to it. But cool. otherwise I'm just like, I'm just cracking on, yeah. So in terms of like escapism, I completely agree with that. Um, often with my ADHD, I can sometimes get a bit like overstimulated, a bit overwhelmed. So I just stop what I'm doing and I go to what I call like my comfort videos. So I'll just go online and watch videos of people exploring like abandoned buildings, basically. So it can range from, you know, abandoned hospitals to theme parks to schools. Um, and even sometimes homes that have just been sort of left and, and uh, maybe the person has, has passed or something like that. So it sounds a little bit dark, but actually it's something very peaceful about somebody just walking through a very quiet building and just looking at all the things that have been left and kind of just frozen in time, I suppose. Do you find that, you know, whether, it, whether it's watching this or whatever, do you find that these activities generally help your mental health? That's the point of it, right? Massively. Look, I, I think fundamentally we have to remember that Everybody has their own quirks and differences in what they enjoy. What we have to get to the point is that me metal detecting or Rob listening to classical music shouldn't be seen as weird by anybody. Yeah. That's just what some people like to do. And there's going to be a million different things which some people might consider 
a bit weird or a bit odd, but if that's what brings you joy, as long as you're not hurting anybody or yourself, then surely that's a good thing. You've got to find it. in life. Like Rob's been, we were talking about, and obviously read the poem and talking about such a finite amount of time on this, on, on this earth, really, you have got to might as well enjoy as much of it as you yeah, possibly can. Sure. And if you find enjoyment in something that others perceive as odd, it doesn't matter. Enjoy it. And actually, do you know what? Try and force them to metal detect in a studio and see if you can change their view. I think it's a really nice note to end on. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. A huge thanks to all of my guests, of course. And if you want to see more episodes, we've got lots on the page. Head over and check them out. <laughs>